y a si longtemps déjà J'ai oublié comment Tant de mots, de moments Pensez depuis longtemps Hello and welcome to the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast. My name is Nikki. I'm also known as Knitting with Cat Hair on Instagram and Cat Hair Knitting on Ravelry. I'm coming to you from Sudbury, Ontario, Canada, where I live with my partner, our two daughters, and our five cats. So a big warm welcome to all new viewers. This is primarily a knitting podcast. However, I do talk about some of the other crafts I'm getting into at the time, such as cross stitch, crochet, and hopefully in the near future, embroidery. And of course, a big welcome back to all returning viewers. So um, just a few admin things right up front. So I normally have been trying to record a podcast every two weeks, um, but I'm finding that that doesn't give me as much time to, to knit and make progress on, on some of the things that I'm working on. So I'm thinking I'm going to start doing a, a, a podcast every three weeks. And that will give me two weekends to focus on knitting, which is primarily the time where I'm able to to actually get a lot of my knitting done. Um, yeah, because as fellow podcasters know, um, editing and getting a, a podcast ready for upload um, can take a significant amount of time and it does take up um, a large portion of my weekends when I do it. So, so this will just give me more knitting time. Um, yeah, and I want to mention, uh, we do have a knit along running in the Knitting with Cat Hair podcast group on Ravelry. Um, it's the Around the World Make Along 2021. And essentially the premise of it is to um, knit from a different location every four months. So by different location, I mean knit a pattern or use a yarn from a different location every four months. And the, the location for this trimester is your country. So if you're knitting something from yarn that's from your country or a design that's from your country or both, um, you're eligible to enter. Um, all finished objects need to be posted in the finished objects thread on Ravelry. So just a reminder to those who have finished. And um, there will be prizes. So every four months I will be drawing one winner. Um, and future locations are still to be determined. So I think what I'll do um, is put in a slideshow at the end of the podcast that shows some of the projects that we've um, that have been submitted to the um, the uh, around the world make along. So you guys can see some of the some of the lovely makes that are being made. And we've already had a couple finished objects, which is great as well. Um, OK, and with that, I think we can move into the knitting talk. So in terms of what I'm wearing. This is my finished weekender. I finished this in, I think it was 2017. It was a while ago anyways. I've worn it a couple times on the podcast, so I'm not gonna go into details about it other than to say that it was knit up out of Tannis Fiber Arts uh, Pure Wash Worsted in the colorway Ravine. And I should mention that all, everything that I talk about, you can find links um, down below to everything I mentioned on project pages. So if you'd like more details, please click on my project page on Ravelry for this project. Okay, so I have no finished objects today to share with you. Um, sorry, my cat's distracting me. <laughs> Brownie, come say hi. Come on. No, it doesn't want to say hi, it just wants to play. Okay, so I have no finished objects. However, I do have a hoe, a half finished object. So this is my vanilla sock, vanilla stripey sock, I think I'm calling it. Um, yeah, it's knit up out of Natural U, which is a um, Ontario-based natural uh, hand dyer of yarn. And I had purchased a mini skein set from them called, uh, the colorway was called Fresh Cut Grass. So what I've done is I've just created um, a stripey sock using those mini skeins. And um, I've also supplemented with a few, uh, the browns are from Canon Hand Dyes, which is, I think it's an American based hand dyer, indie hand dyer. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with the colors. They, they, uh, they blend really well together. They look very natural. Um, 
yeah, they don't have individual colorway names. So I can't really tell you what colors they are. But yeah, this is just a vanilla sock. I did a one by one twisted rib at the top. I cast on my usual 64 stitches and um, on US 1 size 2.25 millimeter needles. I do mine, um, I do my vanilla socks on chow goo uh, red lace needles. So like I do the magic loop and yeah, I'm just really, I'm really happy and it, it fits perfectly. So I did a slip stitch heel flap and gusset just my usual standard recipe so yeah that's the first one and then I did cast on the second one and I've just started the heel so yeah I'm working on these ones pretty slowly um, I usually try and work on them during conference calls for work I'm working from home right now still so yeah um, slow going but I'm enjoying it and I really love the yarn. So those are housed in my two at a time, my needle crafts bee bag, drawstring bee bag. So this is a, I'm not doing my socks two at a time, obviously, but it is made for doing two at a time sock knitting. So you can put one uh, skein of yarn on each side. And then there's little clasps that you can close so that the, the yarns don't get tangled up. And I must say, I do prefer, after having tried um, two at a time sock knitting on Magic Loop last year, I do prefer it. Um, I really enjoy the fact that the, the socks get done at the same time and I don't have to, I don't have to make as many notes because I don't have to measure both times when I'm doing like the foot length or whatever. I, I already know that it's going to be, they're going to be the exact same length. So yeah that is my hoe okay now in terms of works in progress i only have two i've been very good um <laughs> for me anyways i usually have like a ton of things on the needles but i'm really trying to make progress on things so um these next two works in progress i had a few issues with both of them so i didn't get as far as i would have liked but i still made some progress so i'm going to talk about my swallowtail first this is a swallowtail sweater uh, the pattern is by Jamie Hoffman also known as Nitosophy. it's this beautiful color work sweater it's color work on both sides um, featuring a swallowtail butterfly in the center and um, yeah so I had finished the body last time and I'm now just starting the color work portion at the bottom of the sleeves so I'm in the home stretch for the first sleeve anyways. I still have yet to do the second sleeve. So my issues <laughs> with this sweater, I've done this sleeve three times now. So following the pattern, I you separate for the sleeves down here and then um, when you're knitting the body and then you when you're ready to knit the sleeves, you pick them back up and you continue with the color work and then you start the stockinette. So, um, as recommended, I did go, what did I do? I went down in down a needle size, down a needle size for the stockinette portion. I did the same thing on the body. So I think I'm using a US, I can't remember. Um, I can't remember. Anyways, the details will be on my project page. So for whatever reason, even though I went down the needle size, um, this stockinette portion was still knitting up way too large, like way bulky, like I was getting a bulge. So I ripped back and I went down another needle size and they were still too large. So there wasn't, there wasn't a bulge, they just looked giant. So what I ended up doing was I ripped back again. So third time's a charm, right? And uh, this time I decreased immediately. So right when I picked, um, sorry, did I say pick up? I didn't knit back. I did not rip back the, the color work part. I just started back at the stockinette part. So when I did my first round, I decreased four stitches immediately, like in the round um, evenly. And and that brought me back to a regular size that seemed to jive better with the with the 
color work portion and then I continued in pattern which is I think it's it's uh decrease two stitches every six rounds or something like that so you'll notice all my little my lovely little stitch markers those are my decrease rounds um, and I did end up doing a couple extra decrease rounds just because I wanted it to get I wanted it wanted to get it to a, a decent circumference for the um, for the wrist so yeah um, third time's charm smooth sailing now and for the next sleeve I will just uh, yeah pick up and do the exact same thing and I'll just um, move my markers over as I as I decrease I won't even have to count pretty handy so yeah I'm knitting my sleeves on um, magic loop I'm down to a US2 I think I was down to a US2 <laughs> for these uh, for the stockinette portion it's pretty small but apparently yeah I guess um, I guess I am a tight tight knitter when it comes to the color work I didn't think I was as tight as as that but apparently I am so there's that. I'm also alternating skeins using the helical method, um, which is, if you don't know, that's where you basically um, you knit with two different color, uh, two different balls of yarn, and you slip the last three stitches every round. You can find more information on that. There's lots of YouTube videos, um, but I am getting a little bit of stripiness. You can see from the alternating because the skeins were quite different. One was a lot darker. But uh, yeah, so that's, that's great. My concern now though is the body. So it's on cable needles or yeah, it's on a cable right now. So you can't really see how wide it is. It's all kind of scrunched up. As I explained before, that's because I might need to add some extra length, but I'm short on this beautiful yellowy lichen color. So I need to see what I have left over from my sleeves. Um, but yeah, I don't know, cause the body, I don't know if you can see, it is bulgy a little bit in the stockinette portion. See that? So I don't know, I might end up ripping back and uh, redoing on a size US2 needle. So we'll see. The sweater might be a really long work in progress, but I'm loving it. I'm absolutely loving it. I love the yarn. The yarn is Georgian Bay Fiber Co., which is a local to me, Sudbury-based indie dyer. Um, the yarn is a 100% BFL, non-superwash, and the color weighs, and it never shows up as beautiful as it is in person. This, uh, no, it's more yellowy. Anyways, this is called Lichen. The natural color is called Vintage Lace. This dark brown color is called Wrought Iron. And then the body down here is called Noble Rust. And yeah, it's, it's beautiful yarn. I really, really love it. Okay, so that's my swallowtail and <laughs> my tale of woe with it. And that is housed in my Jezebel B bag. A Canadian band ma bag maker, sorry, on Etsy. I love it because you can swing it over your arm and walk and knit with it. And it's also reversible, which is cool. Sorry, I'm not sponsored by anybody that I talk about in this in this podcast. I should make that clear as well. I just I'm just a fan of, of what I rave about. So yeah, it's reversible, which is cool too. So you can use it as a, a white version as well. All right, so swallowtail. Next up is a brand new cast on. I mentioned it in the last episode. I am knitting the Soiree sweater by Emily Foden. It is, um, the pattern is found in this book called Knits About Winter. Beautiful book. Absolutely gorgeous. The, just the, even just the imagery in it is beautiful. Um, yeah, so Emily Foden is a Canadian designer and actually hand dyer. She has her own um, yarn line as well, which I have not had the pleasure of using yet. And so the yarn that I am using for this is Lichen and Lace, which is a Canadian hand dyer. I think they're out on the East Coast, I want to say. What? Okay. It's a bit of a disaster here because I am alternating skeins. So I have four balls attached. 
So I am holding, I'll show you the yarn. I am holding one skein of lichen and lace. Uh, I think it's called their marsh mohair. 72% kid mohair, 28% silk together with uh, their sock yarn, actually. I had a sweater's quantity of sock yarn that I had ordered last year, over a year ago now. So I'm really trying to knit from stash. So I did have to purchase the mohair to match with it, um, but I'll get into that later. But yeah, so, and this is the colorway Beach Glass. It's actually more greeny, greeny blue. I don't know, it seems to be showing up pretty blue on there. It's gorgeous, so pretty. So yeah, I'm holding that double to make the soiree. And this is my progress so far. Let's see if I can show it, show you the pretty pits. Yeah, so it's this gorgeous oversized boxy sweater with cables and honeycomb up the sides. So that's gonna be on the side. So the main, like the front and the back are gonna be stuck in it. You can see so pretty colors um yeah maybe i'll pop in a picture of what the finished product looks like it's so gorgeous um just those those details like especially the cable along the around the sleeve i love that and then the seed uh sorry the honeycomb goes up the sides continues up the sides it's very beautiful so with this i have this is also a third times the charm <laughs> cast on um, so I'm trying to remember what my first issue was. I can't remember what I did wrong. I did something wrong in the first one, but I, I will say that I'm a pro now with this, this pattern. I have it like totally memorized. Um, I do have to keep track of like the number of rows I've completed because it's a 10 row repeat. So I do keep track of that. But in terms of the pattern, I know the pattern inside and out now after three times. So the second time I had to restart because I can totally pulled a like newbie mistake that I have not done in years and I still don't know to this day how I did it but I twisted when I joined in the round and didn't realize for like the longest time like I had I had about half of this done and um and then I realized it was twisted and I think because the I'm using needles or like a cable that's probably too short so things were really bunched up and I couldn't tell that it was twisted. So when I was shifting it around, it just, cause it curls up on its own, I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> so yeah, I had to rip it all out and redo it. Um, and the part that takes the longest to do is right at the bottom. So I don't know if I can show you cause it's kind of curling up. Okay, right here all along the bottom there's like a it's like the start of the honeycomb pattern which is kind of you have to do a bunch of a bunch of maneuvering <laughs> let's say it's a really pretty pattern this is what it creates if you keep doing it um but yeah it took me forever i think it took me i'm not even gonna lie like hours to do the first time because i was really fumbly with it i'm pretty good at it now but yeah so that was heartbreaking to have to rip it out again. But anyways, I'm on the third time and I measured it. It is it is um, knitting up exactly the size that uh, it should be, which is great. Um, what else did I want to say about this? Oh, I, okay, a few things actually. So I'm trying a few techniques here. Um, so what I've done is for the cabling, firstly, I'm not using a cable needle. This is my first time cabling without a cable needle. If you subscribe to Andrea Mowry's newsletter, she recently, um, not the last one, but the one before that, she had sent out a video link to cabling without a cable needle. I watched it and it's super simple, <laughs> super simple. Um, I did struggle a little bit at the beginning because I am holding, again, two yarns together, right? So when you are cabling without the cable needle, you essentially take, you have to take a few of the stitches off the needle um, and basically rearrange. So I leave them sitting there and sometimes I wasn't picking up both strands. Um, so I struggled at first, but now I'm, I, I'm very good at it. I'm, I'm proud of myself 
And I think it is much faster without the cable needle because I'm not like having to dig around look for my cable needle. They always get lost, I swear. Um, yeah, so I, I'm loving it. So I can put a link down below to that tutorial that I used. And um, if you're interested in checking it out, I know Andrea from uh, Fruity Knitting also cables without a cable needle. And I think she has a good video on that as well. So that's one technique I'm using or lack of tool I'm using. <laughs> and then the second is I took a page out of Sophie's book from Burka Creations. And what I've done is I'm using the regular size needle on my right hand needle and on my left hand needle I've actually I'm actually using two sizes smaller and that just makes when you're doing especially like twisted stitches and having to slip through the back and and things like that or cable it just makes it a lot simpler um, so for those who don't know the right hand needle when you're knitting is the one that defines the size of the stitch so it doesn't really matter what size your left hand needle is as long as it's smaller you wouldn't want to go larger because you'd be stretching your stitches but yeah so that's a really good tip and I have been enjoying that it just makes it so much easier um, for cables especially yeah so those are two two tricks and what else do I want to say about this oh I did I'm trying in the new year to be a good knitter and I did knit a gauge swatch for this and not only did I knit the gauge swatch because I've done that in the past I actually washed and blocked it to make sure <laughs> that I was getting an accurate reading on it so that's really important and the other thing that's really important is to make sure that if you're knitting something in the round and it says that the gauge is measured in the round you should be gauge swatching in the round so I did that but what I usually do is because I'm I'm always scared to run out of yarn is I will knit my gauge swatch um, wash and block it but I don't like I don't cut it so I leave it <laughs> attached to the balls of yarn and then I just unravel it later on and reuse it because I really don't want to run out I guess I could save it to the end too that would be another option but yeah, so um, I should get a very accurate size on this. I am knitting the size 55 inch finished circumference um, at the chest, I guess. Yeah, it was bust size. So that would give me about 10 inches of positive ease, which is quite a bit, but the pattern calls for 12 to 18 inches or 12 to 16 inches or something. So it's pretty roomy. So I think, yeah, I think it's good. I'm really enjoying it. And the yarn is really lovely. I love, I've, I, I haven't knit with mohair too often. Actually, I think only once before this. And uh, it's, it adds such a lovely soft texture to it. And the, of course, there's the halo, if you can see that. And I love the way that the, the yarns are, like the variegated yarns are, are playing off each other. It's very lovely. So yeah. And that is, I don't know if I mentioned this, this I'm knitting this up for our, our around the world Mal. And it is housed in this um, beautiful bag that is hand dyed by Natural U. It's a drawstring bag and it's reversible. There's a, so this one has like pinks, pinks and yellows on it. And on the inside, it's all browns, if you can see pretty browns and I showed it last time but it like matches perfectly with my socks <laughs> that I'm making yeah so yeah that is literally it for all of my works in progress um trying to be really good and actually focus on finishing things before casting on new things but I am doing a little bit of dreaming <laughs> so um, I showed last time that I was uh, gifted some gorgeous Letlopi yarn from my mom and from her friend Barb. So I've been playing around with colors and trying to figure out what I want to make with it. So I think, I think I've decided to use these four colors. So this will be, um, so the pattern I'm thinking of, first of all, 
is, I think it's pronounced Talia. I'll put it across the screen and I'll show you what it looks like. It's a Jennifer Steingast pattern and it is, I guess it's an Aran weight. I can't remember if the original is knit up out of Letlopi. I think it might've been, which is great. So yeah, I'm going to use this beautiful, um, kind of oatmeal-y, peachy color for the main body. And then for the color work, I'm going to alternate um, with these three colors, I think. So firstly, look how lovely the rust looks with that color. Doesn't it look so pretty? I love just the two. If I was doing a two color color work, I would do those two. Um, but I think, yeah, this one calls for four different colors. So I think they look okay together. Yeah, so that, that's what I'm thinking of for my Telia. And I also purchased over Christmas a, I think it was over Christmas, yeah, another Jennifer Steingast pattern. So I haven't bought the Telia pattern yet, but I did purchase the Golden Fern. Oh my gosh, I saw this version that was knit up in, I want to say Yama Fiber Arts. I'll pop a picture in. It is so stunning. It's faded and it just looks so beautiful beautiful and autumn-y. <laughs> I'm really digging autumn colors lately. Yeah, so um, I kind of want to copy that version, I think. So we'll see though, because, okay, so I'm really trying hard to not buy more yarn. So I know I mentioned that I bought that mohair. That was to use up a sweater's quantity of yarn that I already had in my stash. So I justified it. <laughs> If it helps me use up my stash and it doesn't add to the stash considerably, because I might have a little bit of leftovers, but then it's okay. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to be really good because for various reasons, um, well, yeah, monetarily, I mean, we're, we're starting to impose a tighter budget on ourselves. <laughs> Um, so that's always a good reason to, you know, not buy too much yarn. And I have so much, I have so much, I have bins of yarn that were gifted to me that I don't even know what's in them. There could be like, I, I know there's a couple possible sweater quantities of, of hundred percent wool yarn, which is amazing. Um, so I really need to look through and see what there is and, and start making plans based on the yarns that I have. Um, yeah, and I am slowly moving, um, away from synthetics. So I do have quite a few in my stash right now and I'm not, I'm not getting rid of them. I'm not tossing them away or anything like that. Um, and I do have plans for a couple of them already, but I think I really, I'm really, um, really digging these natural yarns, uh, the 100% wools. And I want to, as I mentioned in my previous podcast, I really want to start playing with other breeds uh, of sheep. So that's kind of on my goal to try out different breeds. That might involve having to buy more yarn, but <laughs> if I can get rid of some of my yarn first, then maybe, you know, wow, I'm terrible. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so I think uh, that is it for the knitting content. I'll move into a little bit of life stuff. And firstly, oh, I forgot to mention my cold tea here. So I'm drinking this tea out of this lovely sheep mug that my mom um, picked up when she was here over Christmas from a local individual who was selling them. Uh, selling a set of these of these mugs on I don't remember where Facebook or something like that so she got the whole set um, I think there was like chickens and pigs and cows and whatever and uh, she kindly let me keep the sheep one <laughs> it's so cute so I'm just drinking um, some David's tea I think it's called Buddha's blend yeah it's this lovely mix mm. it's a lovely mix of white tea, green tea, jasmine, and hibiscus. And it's it's so delightful. It's by far my favorite. And I've tried a lot of D David's teas that I truthfully did care for, but this one's good. Yeah. So in terms of life stuff, we've 
really um, obviously we're all in lockdown still so uh, like full-on lockdown where you can't really go anywhere not supposed to go anywhere um, we have gone outside <laughs> and socially distanced from other people we went sliding a couple weekends ago that was a lot of fun we haven't done that in a few years actually so we were able to find a great hill um, so we went sliding with the kids and what else did we do? We went, um, oh, my daughter is wanting to go skating. She, yeah, we haven't gone once this year. So we have a skating rink, literally like a five minute walk from our house that we usually go to, um, but we haven't gone this year. And when we went to go last weekend, it turns out that her feet have grown, which I should have known. So her skates don't fit anymore. So trying to find skates. And I need to find them in person because I need her to try them on. Um, I don't want to order them online. So that's, yeah, we went out. I mean, there's not a lot of places you can go right now, right? Everything's closed. So Walmart was open because I guess they sell groceries, so they're allowed to be open. So we went there and apparently they didn't get any skates in this year at all. Um, so out of luck there. So the hunt for skates is on and what else we have a long weekend coming up next weekend we have family day i don't know if you guys celebrate that in other countries as well but canada we have um in february we have um a friday off and so that'll be nice to have a long weekend because i'm still working from home as i mentioned um work is crazy <laughs> i don't want to get into it but it's not a source of joy right now <laughs> let's just leave it at that and yeah other than that I've just been knitting lots and watching lots of podcasts lots of new podcasts oh I did want to mention um, a knit along that is being held um, jointly by three other podcasters because I think it's so intriguing and if I could I would join in um, for those of you who love Alice Starmore especially the Tudor Roses book I've seen it on, may have seen it on um, Andrea, Andrea and Andrew's podcast, Fruity Knitting. She has knit from Tudor Roses. So um, Sophie from Burka Creations, Gabriella from Merryweather Knitting, and Bella from 100 Acre Wool Yarn. I'll put links down below. Um, they're ho hosting, oh, sorry hosting a joint knit along from the Tudor Roses books. So I can't wait to follow along with that because I, yeah, I think those patterns are absolutely stunning and I can't wait to see what colors they choose. So if, yeah, if you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. They're all beautiful color work, um, some cable knit. Very, I, I feel like I want to say the designs are very, um, maybe for advanced knitters, I would say. I don't think they're super beginner friendly, but they but they are lovely. I'll be following along with that. And what else? Yeah, I have. Um, oh, I have some <laughs> bullet journals coming. So I was watching uh, Free Your Fiber, another awesome podcast with Anastasia. And uh, she was showing her new bullet journal that she started. And I am jumping on that bandwagon. So I ordered a few bullet journals, uh, one specific for knitting and then the other I think I'll just keep for personal goals and staying organized and stuff like that. But yeah, I'm going to start my first knitting journal. So I'm super excited. Um, so I'm just waiting for those to arrive. And yeah, I think, I think that's about it. So I will leave it there and I shall see you guys all in three weeks. And as I mentioned, I'm going to pop in a slideshow of some of the beautiful works um, that are being created during the Around the World Make Along. And I hope you guys join in. All right. Take care. Bye. Il y a si longtemps déjà J'ai oublié comment Tant de mots, de moments Pensés depuis longtemps De 
devant ce mur muet Faut chercher autrement Des photos, des regrets Pour que ça nous revienne